morning, Greater Latour. From the WCA 2TV studio, I'm Scott Amolta alongside Alexis Coletti. And coming up today, Student Council wants to hear from you and reporter Bailey Knoll reviews some camera gear. I'll listen more on today's morning announcements. Student Council will be hosting a question and answer session in C106 today during Lunch and Learn. All students are welcome to stop by and ask any questions or share any concerns they have about our school. Students interested in attending PFEW are reminded to turn in their applications to Ms. Albright in the 910 office. Now through Thursday, February 13th during Launch and Learn, Fabric Arts and Design students will be selling handmade scrunchies for $3 each. All proceeds from the sale of these scrunchies will be donated to organizations that fund the rescue and recovery efforts in Australia. The scrunchies come in a variety of colors and prints. Stop by and purchase a scrunchie or two to help benefit this worthwhile cause. Now here is Cole McNeil with a three-day forecast. Good morning, Wildcats. Time for your local weather report. Today there's rain with a high of 42 and a low of 26. Wednesday brings more rain with a high of 42 and a low of 37. Finally on Thursday we have more rain with a high of 48 and a low of 17. That's all for your weather report. Thanks and back to you guys. Thanks Cole. Ms. Mamorel is holding a paper valentine making activity using the laser machine. Everyone is welcome to attend to make a laser cut pop-up card for friends, family, or that special someone. No previous experience with a laser is needed. Sessions will be offered during lunch two on Wednesday, February 12th. If that time doesn't work for you, you can make arrangements with Ms. Mamorel for a different day or time. Students interested in engineering, machining, welding, electrical, and natural resources are invited to attend a field trip to Robindale Energy's power plant on Friday, February 21st. Please see Mrs. Yatter in the 1112 office for more information. The annual Pi Day t-shirt design competition is now underway. Shirt submissions are due by February 17th and can be submitted via email to Reese Petrosky. The winner will receive a shirt with their design at no cost. Now for today's daily fact on e-cigarettes. Did you know that e-liquid is classified as contaminated, toxic, and carcinogenic? There are no standards for the flavors used. Please make smart choices. Now here's Preston Ying with What's Cooking. What's cooking, Latrobe? It's Tuesday, February 11th, and the main line's cooking up cheesy meatballs on a garlicky hoagie roll with sides of seasoned spiral fries and savory green beans. Over in the cultural quarter, we've got cheese stuffed shells with sides of garlic breadsticks and more savory green beans. Finally, the soup of the day is beef vegetable. That's what's cooking. Thanks and back to you guys. Thanks, Preston. Current sophomores and juniors, there's still time to apply for the following enrichment programs this summer, including the Iacocca Global Entrepreneurship Intensive at Lehigh University, the University of Pittsburgh Health Scholars Academy, and the Pennsylvania School for Excellence in the Agricultural Sciences at Penn State. Interested students should see Ms. Hager in the 1112 Office for application details. The deadline to apply is February 19th. Reporting for WCATTV, this has been Alexis Coletti and Sky DeMalta. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Stay tuned for a review of the GoPro head strap by reporter Bailey Knoll. Today, I will be reviewing one of GoPro's most popular camera mounts, the head strap. I've had some experience with it and I will be sharing my opinions of using it. You can find them online for less than $10. Amazon Basic sells it for about $9. The GoPro head strap features easily adjustable nylon straps with rubber inserts to prevent it from coming off during activity and can be used underwater. Although it's similar to GoPro's chest strap, which I also own, I believe the head strap provides a better first person view since you can see exactly what the wearer is looking at instead of being limited to only seeing which way they're facing, also from a lower angle. I've had my head strap for just over a year and I've used it for a multitude of activities and I would say it works better for some than others. Although I've never used it underwater, one of my friends has. He said the strap lost all of its elasticity when it got wet and would not stay on his head. I've personally used the head strap for bowling, boating, and have attempted to use it for tumbling. But i found when it comes to tumbling and other vigorous activities, it isn't the most secure and can be kind of scary. I've tried it myself with my limited tumbling skill set, and when my cousin and I got together to film this, we didn't feel comfortable using the head strap and ended up using the more secure chest strap instead for her safety. We recommend using the chest strap instead for any activities that go upside down, since it's secured to you in four different places and makes it harder to fall off. When it comes to more tame activities like boating and bowling though, it works great and was comfortable. I was able to easily adjust it to fit my smaller head, and when I've used it with my friends with larger heads or ponytails, they were able to comfortably wear it too. So, if I were to give it a rating out of 5, I would give it a 4 out of 5. It gives you good quality first point of view footage and is easy to use. 
But, because it comes up underwater, along with the fact that you're limited to staying upright, since using it for activities that require you to go upside down, like tumbling, can be dangerous, I docked it a point because using a chest mount would be better and safer. The head strap is not an end-all mount for every activity under the sun, but for what it can do, I like using the head strap anytime I can.